Hey folks, working on my NEMA 2000 converter, so that's basically for working with EVO Autopilots and such, uh, any, any N2K compatible Autopilot, I'm trying to get it to work so you can use a remote control. Uh, one of the things I've come up across is the fact that different systems use different types of cables, even though they use the same wiring. So for example, here we have a CTOG NG cable, uh, which I've cut the end off. And one thing to watch, if you are cutting the ends off like I are, do it in the middle. Um, and I would have got two good cables. I've kind of just lost one of these connectors, which would have been quite useful. Um, so we've got blue and white, and that's the signal wires. So if I check my notes, yes, blue is low, white is high. And you've got your power, which is uh, negative and positive. Now I double ch checked and uh, CTOC, or not CTOC. NEMA 2000 cables are supposed to be about 18 gauge, uh, especially for longer runs. Uh, you probably can get away with less um, if you're making up your own cables, but I suspect if you're going over longer distances or having bigger power outputs, then you probably want to be a bit more uh, copper. Um, so what we're gonna do anyway is show how we can convert something that's proprietary. Uh, this cable as is, is about 40 quid. So just with one end and bare wires is ridiculous. Uh, so what I want to do is actually convert this one I've cut and get an end on it, much like I have here. So I can connect it into one of the cheaper buses that I've got. And I'll stick a link down to these below. You get them on AliExpress for about 20 quid. Um, these are very much like what you would see on <coughs> the, the, just the standard thing. But you'll see the, the wee end I've put on. So if we unhook it, this is one of the wee boards I was testing. So as you can see, I have it wired in there. Now the colours don't match. I've, I've just went with a, a twisted pair uh, cable. Um, so the colours don't really make much difference as long as your H's go to your H's and your L's go to your L's. It'll work fine. Um, so, and you'll see there, that they're just wee screw connectors. So I'll stick a wee pin up. I think I had have it sitting here. Yeah. So that is the pin out. So it is um, basically in the middle is low. So the wee center pin is low. Uh, bottom, bottom left this way is high. Uh, the bottom right is uh, common, so I assume that is, yeah, common is ground, negative, and the net S is the signal cable, so that's 12 volts. Uh, so those are very easy. These are only about two quid, 230, um, and you just use a screwdriver then, so no solder or anything like that there, so you can make up your own cables. Very handy. So what the plan is to do now is to add one of these, to make back the cables. Yeah, so I'm gonna add one of these on here now. So there I have it. I have made one CTOC NG to the normal. Uh, one of the lessons learned here was I cut it off at the end and I've basically ruined one of these here. Um, if you get a meter cable, so I think a meter I had said was about 34 quid. Um, what you can do is actually cut it in half so you get two connectors. Uh, and it means about 16 quid each. The, the funny thing is, Raymarine actually sell them with one end and the bare wires and they charge, guess what, about 35 quid. So basically you're cutting the price in half. So that's a, a good tip there if you need to connect between, between um, systems. Um, when you have a look at the board, so one of the things I've been doing is obviously uh, connecting between the systems. So what we can actually do is put, put this into the end of this one and put it in, I know it's blue, but you can still actually connect it and take out the, this maybe work, yep. Take out the wee resistor. This is gonna make a liar out of me. Oh, cheeky friggers. So basically for the blue, they've actually changed the, the pin out. So you can't actually use these cables to connect one device to the other, which is very, very sneaky. Um, now, what I imagine I can do is put it in here <coughs> and then that will just work the same. Uh, the wiring's all the same anyway, it's just high and low. Um, 
So what we can do then is we've got the resistor on one end, we just put the resistor on the other, and that kind of as long as you've got the resistor on either end of the bus, and what I can actually then do is actually take this resistor off and put it onto my main CTOC NG that I have on the test bench at the minute. Um, I'll just leave the two blue ones. Um, again, you could probably buy the blue cables and do the same thing with the blue that I've done and the, the white ones, but yeah, it's, it's obviously a sneaky way of um, getting their money out of you by changing the connectors. I know there's obviously, oh well, it, it's to stop you doing stuff, but it, it makes no sense why you'd want two different colors or different types of connectors. You see these here all use the same, so they just have male and female. And the good thing about these ones is you can actually piggyback them. So you can actually, if you see that end is male, that end is female. So what you can do is plug them together. So instead of having four ports, and then you, you could have eight. And so you can do that as many as you need. Uh, and then you stick your resistors at either end. So finally, just want to show you some of the other bits. I know I'd give a price, uh, but there's some of the, I bought a pack which came with um, the five port or four port as shown here which currently has one of my naughty control boxes tied into it. Uh, it comes with a T-piece and what these would normally be if you were running your network around your boat and you had like instruments or stuff where you wanted like one-offs or um, sensors or stuff like that there so you don't have to <coughs> basically do wiring or stuff like that there, just be plugging in place. So you'd have like your, your backbone cable and then these here um, or you can obviously piggyback them like so, as I said, and push them in, screw them on. Um, so that works perfectly well. So that gives you another port. Um, you can obviously do fives and bigger ones than that there. I'll stick some of the links down below to these here and the kit I bought. Uh, it also came with two cables, uh, a couple of meters, as you can see. So it's not, um, I think it's two meters. It looks like two meters. Um, two meters and then I think there's a power cable there, which is the same thing. So it's, um, Fucking cables everywhere. Ugh. Yeah, so the power cable is about two meters and it goes to just that there, so it doesn't have any other data cables. Um, I just have it connected on to 12 volt for testing. And finally, doing a bit of cutting out here. Yep, yeah, and finally, these two here. Which, and again, I think that's another two meter one. So two two meter cables, and then the T piece, the four piece, and then the two two end resistors. And I think that was about 40 quid. Um, on their own, a uh, six port connector is 23 quid. A uh, T piece connector, 10 quid. Uh, three meter cable, 15 quid. So favorite it's not that expensive you compare that to the raymarine stuff it's much much cheaper and if you use the wee adapter that means you can actually get your raymarine stuff and then just run this elsewhere or even cut off the connectors and put these on here so you don't have to use the raymarine stuff the only time i see you needing to use the raymarine stuff is if you've got a setup like this we've got the stng adapter and i bet you the wee yellow one has a different pin out again and um, so you can kind of see that there so that basically allows older CTOC stuff like ST60s and the ST autopilots to connect to the NG so that's basically like an adapter and um, doing some development work so that's why I bought this here don't actually really need it other than the development stuff um, but I just want to see how it takes the <coughs> signals I put in from the CTOC using my naughty control box and then see what it pumps out in N2K and then that'll hopefully allow me to bypass that system altogether and be able to use my box to control the autopilot like an Evo automatically. Um, so basically makes the thing a bit cheaper rather than having to spend another 100 quid you only have to buy the box so it cuts the price in half. Um, I'll stick a link down to the Naughty Control project. I have another YouTube channel which goes into more technical detail and installs setups but I'll keep this sort of the more generic stuff like this here and how to save money in the cables for this channel. Um, but if you want to give a, if that's the type of thing you're interested in, certainly go over and give that a like and a subscribe. It's always appreciated. Uh, well, that's it. The only other thing I had was obviously these field adapters. You can actually make your own cable. Now, how cost effective it is, I'm not too sure. I've been pricing twisted, shielded twisted pair cable, an 18 gauge, uh, as they recommend. And it's working out roughly the same price as the, the pre-made cables from AliExpress. So for me, 
I don't think I'd bother. I'd just go and get the ones. The only time you'd need this, maybe if you needed to drill holes through something and you wanted to get the ends off and then put the ends back on. So these, uh, I'll stick a link down below, but they're only about three, two or three quid. Useful for a couple of situations such as, um, you know, wiring from another system or as I say, if you were putting it through bulkheads or stuff like that there and wanted sort of longer distances or sort of custom laid or something. Um, but certainly I'll stick a link to the cable I'd be using just from a test bed that I've been buying just to, to build these up. Um, but yes, thanks for watching folks. If you have any questions or comments, stick them down below. If you give the video a wee like and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, see you all again soon. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.